to Rachel and Bella Crafts. I hope you're all well. Thanks for joining me here today. Um, before I start, I just want to say two very quick thank yous to Justine and Diane. Um, they're both in our uh, Facebook group and I've received two lovely little packages from them yesterday, which really made my day. Um, I've had my swap parcel come from the heart pocket swap that we did in the group. So these have been made by um, Diane Wilkinson. They are absolutely beautiful. Diane is also um, part of our design team. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen some of the fab makes that she does. But she's very kindly sent me these lovely little extras. These are just absolutely gorgeous. So thank you so much, Diane, because that really made my day yesterday. And um, it's just lovely when you send your swaps and then something lovely comes back. I also want to say a massive thank you to um, Justine. Uh, I was in another swap recently on our group and I did put a post up just saying to a lady, you know, that obviously if they are going to enter swaps, please make sure that you see it through. And unfortunately, we did have another case in the group recently where there was somebody who, um, well, they weren't there to do swaps. They were there to basically just have stuff sent to them and they weren't reciprocating. So um, I mentioned this to the girls and Justine has very kindly sent me this beautiful bundle of all these lovely, lovely fabrics um, to cheer me up and to make up for me not having my my um, my swap come. So Justine, thank you so much for that. That was really, really thoughtful and again, made my day yesterday. So all these lovely goodies. It really is lovely to, uh, to have a bit of happy mail, isn't it? Okay, so today's video. Today's video is gonna be something quite different. I am not making anything today. So I do apologize if that's why you've come. That's not what I'm going to do today. Today I'm going to show you what I've got on my desk. Now what I've got on my desk, I'm going to give you a little bit of a zoom out and I'm going to just quickly show you what's on my desk. So what I've got on my desk here are lots of journals. Oh, and a bit of a mess, but yeah, look, they're all of those journals. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is what are junk journals and you know, the different types of junk journals. And I'm gonna try and do this as quickly as I can because I get a lot of questions uh, in our group, you know, what's this, what's that? How do we do this? How do we do that? So I thought, right, it'd be a lot easier. Just get what I've got off my shelves and show you. I haven't made everything that's here. Some of them have been made by mum, Bella, um, and some of them are journal uh, swaps that I've done with people. So um, just to be clear about that, these are not all my journals. Um, so the first type of journal I wanna show you is uh, the one that I did a demonstration on yesterday. So um, I did a quick demo video yesterday on how to make an easy junk journal. And it was a basic junk journal. And um, also before I go on, I must just clarify one point. The term junk journal is used quite loosely amongst our community. It can also be a little bit of a bone of contention, I do believe. I don't tend to opt into those conversations. So I am aware of the origin of the term of a junk journal, which obviously was initially made from um, when women years ago used to make um, a little booklets or notebooks out of whatever they had to hand around the house. So, you know, bits of scrap, um, gosh, they probably didn't have leaflets coming through the door then, but that kind of a thing. Um, and then obviously that has um, evolved as most things do and has, has become now this, this, this huge, huge, uh, fantastic community um, where people can interpret the art and design in their own way. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I'm not saying that's not a junk journal, this is a junk journal. The term junk journal is what is used amongst what generally what we make um, in this community, isn't it? Um, so some of it is um, from digi products, digital uh, papers that are downloaded from the internet and printed. Um, and some of it is from things that they buy in the shop, cardstock. Um, some of it is made then from genuine junk. So some of the things here on my desk are made from old cereal boxes and um, you know, tags that have been covered from clothing tags, things like that. So it's, it's, it's all about your interpretation of your art. So there's no right or wrong. Um, there's no argument here, <laughs> but I just wanted to be clear about that because I know there is sometimes a little bit of confusion over, um, you know, what is actually a junk journal. So um, they, you'll find different things when you look on YouTube. There'll be different types of videos um, and some of them will go and, and, and will show you how to make one of these fantastic journals literally using... Um, you know, leaflets, um, pamphlets, uh, mail, that kind of thing. And that, uh, it, unbelievable, it's an art. I, I can't do that. My imagination doesn't stretch quite that far. So um, that, I take my hat off to them. But um, just for you to be clear, obviously, when we're using the term junk journal, I don't actually have anything here on my desk that is, is that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
not generic, no, it's definitely not the word I'm looking for, original. Does that make sense? That hasn't been changed, if, if you can sum what I'm saying. So, for instance, with this one here, this is an old brown paper bag, but I've obviously done stuff with it, haven't I? I've zhuzhed it up, as we say. So, yeah, this is a basic, what I would class as, obviously, like I say, this is, these are my interpretations. This is what I would class as a basic junk journal. So, you've got yourself a nice, easy cardstock cover, and then you fill the inside with different types of pages so we've got some book pages we've got tea dye papers in there and um, we've got some notebook pa papers out of you know old notebooks and um, we've got some coffee dye stencil pages i think that's a bit of printed vellum there some old music paper so you know these are examples of all the kind of things that you can put in to um a junk journal a little bit of pretty cardstock goodness what else is in here i think that's it yeah so that's that for that one um this is a that's in the wrong pile. This is a Christmas one that I made uh, last year. Um, and it, it was just designed to be my shopping planner. And I was going to put in there the things that, uh, you know, that we did and one thing or another. Unfortunately, <laughs> we went in lockdown and we didn't do an awful lot. So I didn't end up writing in this journal. <laughs> but that's fine. That's there ready now for next year. So they are the basic, what I would class as, uh, you know, your basic kind of junk journal. Um, you know, it, there's no flips outs or anything like that. And it, it, these are literally excellent for, for writing in and, and for keeping as notebooks. Um, here is another example of one that my uh, mum made for my son. So she's used a lot of, um, uh, you know, blank papers in there because the idea is for him obviously to be able to write in it. Um, and she's added then some little uh, scriptures then at the bottom um, so that he can use it then if he wants to as, as a bit of a, you know, mindfulness book there's little pockets in the front but they're nice and simple and they, they've got plenty of space in there for you know you to, to drop drop big things but it's mainly a nice writing space um, and then she's done a, a nice little journal card there then um, for him to be able to lean on but that feels for all the world like that's covered in I want to say a bit of carpet so I'm trying to cover it over because I don't want his name on the front of the thing but that's that's but again really lovely basic idea but um, very effective. And I think, yeah, she's used cardstock in there. So it's just another example there of um, the type of basic journal that you could do. Now I've got some more here. These are some older ones. These are little ones, little, little journals. So this isn't old, this is new. My mummy just made that for me. But um, this is one of mum's earlier ones. This is the first one I think mum made for me way back when before I'd discovered uh, the fun of junk journaling. And this is one of my first ones where I was playing with uh, patchwork um, fabrics. And I decided to use mine as a, um, uh, well, you know, a, a, a reference. So it was just for me to put in basically um, little ideas of pockets and things. Um, so this is an A6 size, which is half of an A5. Um, and I just thought, oh, well, I'll just put little things in here as you can tell I was obviously doing it around Easter time but there's my heart pockets there look um, and you know it'll just give me some some inspiration should we say you know for different types of pockets and tucks and different ways to decorate things and um, you know just just the different things that you can do really um, and like I say this is when I was first starting out so I, I think I started with some Christmas ones as gifts um, and then you know moved on pretty quickly to other stuff then but yeah, so I kept this as a bit of a, a bit of a reference to me, really. Um, so again, another idea of a type of journal that you can have. You can have a little reference journal, and it's something then that will give you um, ideas. Keep it on the shelf. It doesn't have to be a full size one, you know, as this isn't. Um, it could, but it could be just obviously big enough for you to place in the things that you need to place in. So, my goodness, I don't look through this enough. I'd forgotten most of this was in here. See, it's great. It's good to go back. So that was um, that was made out of a cereal box, I believe. And I literally just covered it with fabric and I think the inside is paper. Gosh, that was good. I look like fabric on there. So that's one example there of a little one. This is another little one that my mum made for me. This was my first ever junk journal I was given. And um, this is nearer perhaps to um, mum's more original kind of work. So, you know, there's a lot with the um, little black bags, lots and lots of little tiny tuck spots and little things in there I and mean, look at these these are so cute um and you know lots of like hidden little places and one thing or another so this is 
this is again is, is a brilliant uh, reference for me for ideas. Um, oh, that's a picture of my old, my favourite book. Um, but yeah, she's she's really um, packed lots and lots of things in here. So uh, the photographs clipped in again. There's a, a tag there. Well, that's a, a little paper bag with a tag inside. Um, and again, a lot of this stuff that she's used is. Um, it's been reused, it's, it's, it's reclaimed things, you know. So she's made a pocket there out of an old book page. Um, there's a little altered um, paper clip. That's a card from my baptism many, many years ago. Um, a little envelope there. So, you know, you get the idea. It's, it's, it's lovely and simple and there's lots of papers in there and lots of places to write, but I probably will never write in it because it's just so lovely. And, um, you know, you can still incorporate everything that you would put in a bigger journal into a smaller size journal. This is um, card, I feel, on the back of here. So again, that's, again, I think that's a, a cereal box that she's probably cut down. I know we worked with a lot of those at the beginning. Um, so that's another example of a small journal. This one here, she made for me two weeks ago because I asked her, she had a lovely little notebook on her desk and I was like, oh, that's really nice. I said, oh, will you make me one? I said, you know, just something I can just carry around with me. So. She did, and she was obviously working on Alice at the time, so she's made me this beautiful little journal, and it is full of paper for me to just write my little notes in, which is exactly what I asked her for. I didn't want anything else, and they just lots of different scrap bits of paper for me to journal um, ideas in and notes, and she's um, put the two little text spots, one that side, one that side, and she's very cleverly used elastic, so obviously I can take and add to it one piece, and she's threaded it over, and then she's crossed them at the top. I don't even see that. So they literally just sit there, not bothering anybody, but it holds itself in place, if that makes sense. Okay, so these are some more examples of some very basic different types of journals that you can do. So this one here has got um, uh, some lovely pockets and things in there. So Mum's put this one together a little while ago. Um, and it obviously just needs to be um, bound. But, you know, some really lovely little simple ideas in here. Things that don't take up a lot of space. Um, but again, would make a really nice um, journaling space, you know. Um, and it just a, a quick example of different things that you can again put in there. And a really lovely um, cover. Um, this one I made for my son in lockdown. Um, my youngest is an avid journaler. Well, I say I made it. I helped him make it. I did the stitching and he did the rest himself. But, you know, he's got his pockets and everything in there. And he's got a pocket at the front. I won't show the front because obviously he's written in it. Um, but yeah, you know, he did these papers himself. Um, and it's great when they, they get a little bit inspired and, you know, they want to do things um, the same as we do. So he does journal in that. My youngest has actually got quite a few journals um, and this is another one that he's got and he uses this for just everyday notes and he covered this one himself and he bound this one himself so he's made left plenty of space in there so he can add an extra signature and it will eventually then sit like that but again such a simple idea no fuss you know and i, I mean i got boys so they, they're not going to have journals that are covered in you know pink shabby chic style stuff so um this is my um <laughs> This is my lockdown journal that I started. I've used um, wallpaper to cover this. Um, I haven't finished it yet because life got a bit busy and I just had loads of others I had to make then. But this was just me trying out. I thought to myself, oh, I'm gonna see what it's like if we use a bit of wallpaper. So this became um, our, our lockdown story. Um, and I, you know, I've added certain bits in when I had time. I uh, worked on some pages. You know, this is quite early on in my journaling um, journey. Uh, but yeah, I've got my official letter in there from the Prime Minister all about <laughs> COVID and why we all had to stay in. And But yeah, I just felt that obviously the time that we were in was quite unique and um, it really was worth, you know, taking a note of and having something to look back on. Um, so yeah, again, this is, you know, I was just busy playing with my stamps the one day and I had a little play there. But, you know, everyday journals, that's kind of what that's for. That's that's your place to do that. I've, I've tried out lots of different types of embellishments and stuff in here. Um, again, I don't look back enough, really, I think, at uh, the different things that I do. But, it's you know, and it's, it's there's more room in there. But, again, that's that's pretty sturdy. So you can see there, I obviously have put too many papers in for the um, 
for the uh, cover because it's it's bulging and that's possibly why I stopped using that one. But but yeah, so that's that's another example there of a different type of journal. So what else do I have on my desk here? So these two here were design team projects that I did some time ago uh, for um, Melody Huey. And um, they were from, uh, with her Junction Link group. This one here was, um, uh, it was the Roses kit and the whole kit was in black and white. It was the first time I'd ever worked with a black and white kit real challenge for me uh, but it was fantastic and it was great because it left me then I, I really had to think outside the box you know how, how was I going to make this colourful how was I going to bring um, you know and of course then I had to use other elements then I had to think about the other things I was putting in so I really enjoyed that but again this is just a nice basic writing journal um, which I probably won't end up writing in because I just, I don't know, it's difficult when you make it yourself. I find you want to write inside of them. You want to keep it nice, don't you? And this one here was her recipe kit. And um, again, it was a, a design team project. So I wanted to do something slightly different. So I made, I suppose you'd call it a file folder journal. Um, but there's, there's two notebooks here. So you have to write all your recipes in. Um, and then, so that's for your sweet, and that's for your savoury uh, dishes. And I've just literally used lots of her kit pages and some lovely coloured card. Um, I need to start using this actually, because this is really quite nice. And then I just put little pockets in then to tuck these extra useful uh, things in that were in her kit. And then um, that just all sits quite nicely in there. So again, that's another style that you can work with. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you are ephemera folders or ephemera holders, maybe. So these are little, they look like journals for all intents and purposes, but when you open them up, the pages actually have pockets and they store um, scraps and, and pieces of ephemera. So, um, you know, these are great for when you've done your fussy cutting and you need somewhere to put all your bits and pieces. Um, Mum made these. Um, she made these, uh, I think, the year before last, actually. Um, I, I did have one that I had like Christmas stuff in and then another one that didn't. So um, yeah, we've got a couple of those there, but again, really basic design, bit of cardstock extended with a bit of washi tape. And then um, she's just hand stitched that in there. And this is another example of one here. This one feels a bit full. Yeah, so again, there's little pockets, pages. Oh, this must be the Christmas one. Vellum and normal pockets. And then we just keep our, you know, all your little bit, bits of useful pretty cardstock that you know you're going to use but you don't want to use right now great place to keep them so again that's just another style of um, kind of storage um, and then oh this is the Christmas one sorry so the Christmas one then has just got pockets in and you can just store all your bits that you fussy cut ready so it's there what you don't use then you can keep safe for next year and again that's just a really simple design this one here is slightly different again this is another one of mum's she's made a file folder style but the journal pages are actually in the center so can you see what she's done there so you've got spine here here's the journal pages there and then there are two file folder sections that sit either side and these store then all of your bits of ephemera and then there's pockets here where she's got some magazine clippings and some book page clippings and there's lovely tags in here and then on the other side, same thing again. So you've got little bits of useful card for journaling and then um, some other lovely bits and pieces that she's made here then. So again, nice little bit of ephemera storage there. And another one here, a lovely pocket with a tag. Gosh, my mummy's clever, isn't she? Mummy makes some fab stuff. See now where she's my inspiration, can't you? Look at all the lovely things she's made. So there's a little notebook in the back of here it's just like a really simple idea but there's just so much to it so we've got a notebook there there's a little envelope there then so you can put bits and pieces inside of there little pockets and then tags that she's got then from pictures and images and things and she's just used some scrap paper there of an old notebook that she had so again like i said this is going back to the kind of um, the origin really of it, um, mum's older stuff, she was very much, you know, she, she learnt right from the start, um, you know, how to use what you've got. Now we've discovered shopping is a bit different, but, <laughs> no. Um, but no, so again, you know, you know, it's made from old music paper, the pages, just really simple designs that are easy to 
um, to replicate. So again, let's see, that's a really lovely idea there. Um, the next style I want to show you is Traveller's Notebooks, or affectionately known on forums and Facebook as TN. So if you do see the expression TN, it means Traveller's Notebook. Traveller's Notebook is smaller. Where's my ruler? Bear with me a second. We'll try and give you the size. So they roughly should be around, I suppose you want it in inches perhaps. So that's four and a half by eight and a half. That one there is eight by, yeah, four and a quarter. And that one there is four and a half by uh, eight. So, you know, they, they vary very slightly, but that, you know, that's the idea. So if you put them up against a, you know, a full size, you can see the difference in size. Um, but the idea of the traveler's notebook is obviously that you can take it with you. So we've got three different styles here. There's um, a nice basic uh, December daily here that Mum made a little while ago. I didn't actually know I had this Mum, I just found it on the bookcase. Um, so this is a, a really lovely um, idea that the ladies do uh, for the end of the year and they do a December daily and the idea is is that you have a day for every, a page for every day um, of December and you write your things in there, you keep your receipts in there, you know all the fun stuff that happens before Christmas um, and you know so they, they're designed to be writing in journals um, and you know there's been some there's some really lovely examples of December dailies on YouTube. Uh, Gail is, uh, makes some fantastic ones so if you want to look at that further. Um, so that's that style there. This one here um, is a Christmas journal that I made. Um, I did make two, I sold the one um, and this was not so much a December daily, but more perhaps just as a kind of Christmassy journal. So, you know, it's got all of the all of the bits that you'd normally expect in a full journal, text spots, all that kind of thing, uh, tags. Um, but it was pretty full embellishment job in this. I actually had a lot of fun doing this. Um, yeah, I think we just had pups not long before and uh, they were keeping me busy. And when they were sleeping, I was able to go and make me journals. So. Yeah, lots of fun. But like I say, it's always good to look back. Um, a little pocket they made with an envelope. But again, just some different ideas. And I liked it as well because I used a pink kit, which I thought was a bit different to what I normally do for Christmas. Because the year before it was all reds and greens and golds, which is fab. But I just wanted to do something different. So that has stayed on my shelf this year because it doesn't look different to any of the others, if that makes sense. And then this one here I had from a lovely lady called Michelle. Um, in a journal swap and the theme was Paris um, which is why I then went and made my Paris kit but um, this is beautiful I absolutely love this journal it is just fantastic and again you can see you know the different things that you can do just because it's smaller it doesn't mean that you can't fit in just as much it just means that uh, you know for instance when you make your journaling cards you just want to make them slightly smaller Everything just needs to be a little bit narrower, that's all. Your pockets don't need to be so big, for example. Traveller's notebooks tend to be a good place to start, um, you know, if you're new to it. Oh my goodness, I didn't see that last time. Look at that little notebook under there. Oh, that's so cute. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's a belly band there, but again, it has not to be the full length of the page. It's just, you know, everything is open to interpretation, isn't it? But this is just the basic idea of, of what um, traveller's notebooks are. So, you know, it's meant to be a, a small, um, a smaller version of, of, the, of the bigger thing. But, but I, I, I love them because they're, they're lovely and compact. And like I say, you can put that in your bag and take, well, I wouldn't put this in my bag. I wouldn't want to ruin it. But, you know, with my notebook, I could pop that in my bag and take that around with me or take it on holiday, pop it in my case. Perhaps if I ever got to go to Paris, I might take that with me then and write in it, but who knows? Okay, so that's the Traveller's Notebooks. We've looked at the basic types of notebooks. We've looked at a flip-out notebook. We've looked at a ephemera holder. So now I'm going to show you some hardback cover uh, journals. So this is another one I had here in a swap. This is lovely. And again, quite a different style from what I've shown you. Um, this was made by a lovely lady called Carolyn Fielding and we did a junk journal swap and I'm fairly certain that the swap was for uh, spring. Um, so yeah, and it was just gorgeous and it was like, I, there is a flip through, a full flip through of this journal, of all the journals I've shown you here that have been sent to me uh, on my page. And again, she's, she's really used lots of um, like real ephemera. And by real ephemera, I mean things like, you know, 
playing cards and um, you know things to colour in and it's not all just been printed out you know she's, she's got stuff here that she's sourced from different things um, you know these are little images and pictures from from um, cards notebooks all different sorts of things die cuts in there um, you know so this is a really great example there's stickers in here just the different things that you can use I think that's oh that was a postcard oh, isn't that lovely so she just covered the back over there look so that I could write in it but yeah so again another different type of style of um of your journals and every single one of them has its own um benefits and different ways that you can use them really so let me just pop that one back by there be very gentle with these ones because they're lovely okay um this is another example of a hardcover journal this is one of mum's she made this for us when we had our puppies um because she was obviously doing her journals at the time i wasn't making journals at that point and i said oh um would you make me one mum i said to put the pictures in of the dogs so she <laughs> got all our little puppies on there like so she made me this absolutely beautiful journal um and it is it's, it's just stunning and she uh you know obviously there wasn't an awful lot of things around at the time for her to use with dog themes so she had to you know what's the word i'm looking for improvise a lot but she's managed to make me things with little pockets and tuck spots um obviously i haven't left the stuff in because it's got like owner information and stuff in there um and you know she's incorporated little things like this in here she's found this paper with uh, the dog and bone on um so it's just you know thinking outside the box really she found some lovely um vintage ephemera pictures as well um <laughs> puppy love but yeah again it was just it's something a little bit different this is not the sort of thing that we would do every day um and uh, you know have some doggy stamps there it is specific to a theme that's the word i'm looking for so this is a theme journal really um and it was it was a custom order and um, what else have I got to show with you? So there's another tag spot there. Um, and obviously she's kind of mixed the theme a bit as well because we didn't want it to be too girly because um, obviously my, my other half would be you know putting things in and out of there as well. Um, but yeah, so it's lovely. The kids love it. They flip through it very often. And, you know, we want to remember all our little pups. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just great. So, you know, I can add, I have photographs that I add in and um, all sorts of things like that. I haven't actually put myself to write on the pages yet because it's just too lovely. But so that's another example. That was a, a, an old book and she's covered that with lovely lace, put a, a front page on the front and then obviously lace then to bind it and then this beautiful um, ribbon to keep it closed. So there we go. I probably made a mess of that now. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That sits on my coffee table. This is a coffee table book in my house and everybody looks at it and they oh of the puppies but that's lovely so it's a nice reminder for us um this is another example of a hardcover book again this is one of mum's um this is a treasure and again the children do come in and out of it we do all look in it because this is a this is a holiday journal um we went on a very special journey about three years ago in fact the date's probably in here if i know mum yep 2017 there we go uh, we went on a very special trip myself my sons and my mum and dad and we went to Spain because my mum is of a uh, Spanish origin and her, gr her grandfather had come from Spain and we had no records on him there was no um he was a merchant seaman but the only family records that my family had were um a birth certificate I think no we didn't have a birth certificate we had his his records from where he'd signed up to um you know for his job um but we you know there was the stories that were told and you know one thing and another but my mum wanted to go and find out more so we went on a fact finding journey and it was absolutely fantastic I think it's probably my, well, my children still now say it, it's the best holiday they've ever been on um and we we literally went we went to the town where my great-grandfather had come from and I won't tell you the whole story because it's very long, very fascinating. But the point is, we actually did achieve what we went there to do. And we found my great grandfather's birth certificate, which was nothing short of amazing, considering how long ago it was. And of course, the Spanish had had the Civil War and everything had been, um, you know, lost and damaged. There's my mum there, she's on the steps of the, their local um, registry office, holding the birth certificate. So yeah, it was brilliant. It was a very emotional uh, trip for us all as well. But um, my mum then came back and she made the most beautiful 
journal for me to put all our holiday photos in, which are all in here. Um, I won't bore you with all of those. And um, yeah, we've 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 got this now as a beautiful keepsake. And um, this is this is our family history. You know, this is well, one small part of of my family history. Um, and yeah, it was it was brilliant. So again, different design again. Um, she's the theme that she's gone with for this obviously we wanted it to reflect the holiday but also my great grandfather so everything is quite you know if you were looking to do something that was perhaps a little bit masculine you know you're not going to go far wrong are you with Tim Holtz but um you know there's ideas there for that you know the different things the elements that she's put in here the envelopes one thing another um it, it really does uh, it suits everybody. Like I say, I've got three boys. These are their holiday pictures in here and they love coming in and, and having a look and, well, they love all the journals, but, you know, so yeah, there's some different ideas in there. Um, but again, it's just another option, another idea. And she's done this again with a hardcover journal. So like I say, I won't bore you with all my holiday snaps, but that's another type of, you can tell my boys have been here because they've not folded the lace properly. As I got it off the shelf, I was like, who's been in the holiday journal and hasn't used the lace properly? It's gone all creasing, isn't it? So that's that one. <clears throat> and then this one here is another hardcover journal that my mum made for my middle son. Um, and this is, a, a, an, again, a perfect example of if you wanted to make a journal for um, a man or a boy, you know, these are uh, kind of ideas and things that you could put in there. Um, <clears throat> and the kind of things that you could use. So, you know, you can't go wrong with a bit of vintage. And uh, she's she's made these beautiful journals for them. Oh, that's a, some special things he's stuck in there. Um, again, a bit of old music paper. So she's backed up the tag there. Birds. Good the good theme to go with, you know. Um, and some old... Uh, she took, uh, aged some writing paper. But again, lots of lovely card stock in here. And it really helps bring that kind of masculine feel to it. Um, nice on oh, it's a pocket. Could be for that. It's an envelope. There we are. Look, so a little flip tuck. My mother's clever. I like that. Oh, see, I did think it was an envelope. It did look like an envelope, didn't it? Yes. There we go. Wasn't me daft. And again, a little pocket there. But yeah, so like I say, and, and my lads know how to use journals so in such a way. And of course, my mum, she dates everything. She's fabulous. But they know how to use things in such a way that it isn't actually in it. They can take stuff out. So that is four examples there for you of hardcover journals. This one here, if you've watched uh, the flip throughs or if you watched my journey making this, you'll have seen this one. This is an example of a journal that's been made using packaging. So I made the cover of this journal using um, simply a packaging envelope that I cut and then extended out, cut the bottom off so it, it, you know, it opened it properly, but it was literally just a what is that, A5? It's slightly bigger than A5, uh, packaging envelope. And uh, literally using that, I then collaged on it and built from that then um, to add all the uh, different elements to it. Um, but again, you can see there look, the comp composition of the, the cover. Um, and I've strung that with um, elastic, <clears throat> similar to the small one that uh, Mum did for me. And I threaded the elastic through the eyelets on the back before I put the lace on so that it was all hidden away and tidy. Um, and again, for a closure, I've just used a scarf that um, I bought from a charity shop for 50 pence. So that's got a new lease of life as well. So that's that one there. Okay. And then last but by no means least, the last style that I've got to show you is vintage. Um, these are two vintage journals. Again, if you've just watched the Alice uh, series you will have seen um, the making of this one here you guys picked the theme um, and then this one here is a vintage journal that I was sent in a journal swap and I absolutely love it so I'm going to just quickly show you how these these have been made and what they're constructed of um, this one here uh, was a fabric cover and I've added then um, a slow stitch um, <clears throat> sampler that I made and I added that on the top so I've just covered cards stock with fabric and lace and then I added this extra then this topper on the top um, and, and you can see then from the inside is uh, cardstock there and that again was bound with elastics um, which you can't see because I've covered them over with lace so what makes it vintage okay what makes it vintage is the colors of the lace I would say um, and the older elements that are in there 
um, to, a lot of people say vintage you want to be very um, you know you're going to use a lot of uh, distressing ink and things like that I've got to be honest I didn't use that much distressing ink with the Alice stuff oh okay maybe I did then perhaps I'm just not remembering it properly <laughs> no but I didn't distress all the pages um, I just just you know use the ink to make things stand out but again it's, it's things like the stenciling using fabrics um, just trying to think how they would have made journals before you know in the olden days as my kids say um so yeah it, it was just trying to incorporate little things like that you know so you're talking about clusters so you're going to use things that are like fabricy and i mean obviously i've used a kit in here and a lot of this is alice but you know you've got a bit of vintage ephemera in there that, that, that that's what vintage tends to mean so if you're, you're seeing something that's advertised as vintage or um, if you're doing a swap and it's vintage that's what that's kind of what the expectation is you know little old elements like that um that it, Feel like they're taking you back to to a time before this one here is a perfect example so Sheila's made this beautiful journal she's used vintage uh sections of quilt and i mean this quilt is really old you, can, you only got to look at she sent me another section here like in a bit of happy mail and you know you only got to look at the construction of it and, and feel how thin it is as well um that it is very very old very delicate um, and just so beautiful to have on the cover of a journal. On top of that, she's added a, a doily, and then she's used, this is really old as well, I think, this old lace here around it to edge it, and added some buttons, and then she's put a beautiful picture behind. But it, it's the lace, it's, it's, it's the color of the lace. It's not all white and sparkly and new. It's, it just feels old. It's, it's just, I can't explain it. There's just some, something quite mysterious about it. Uh, inside as well, then she's used this beautiful, almost like muslin cloth, um, for the interior and that is um again just leading you to that feel of it it just feels old um she's used uh, old ledger papers again another thing that you can use for, for vintage style um she's made a lovely flip there and it, it's like things like this you know so the imagery in it it, it is all the ephemera it is very very old she's coffee dyed the ephemera that she's made herself you know this this patchwork this pictures of embroidery um Some of this ephemera in here is so good. I actually thought it was real, but this is where it, it, you know, it's all about taking the time and putting the time in to make what you're making feel old. Um, you know, even the, the, the journaling tag, it, it's got an, a really old feel about it. It's like it's been in the drawer for 40 years, you know, and it's got an original stamp on there. It, it, it's just, it's just old. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. And, but that, that's the brilliant thing about it. You know, unless you put an old calendar in there, that's out of, um, uh, oh gosh, Grandma's Attic kit, I believe. It's one of my favourites. Um, and then she's just put a little top on with some more of that little quilt, I think. And it, again, it's, it's these little elements. You know, there's a really old paper clip there on an old bit of ledger paper. Um, you know, the, the, the scrap collage in. You know, there's a document there onto that bit of back in there. Little, little notebooks again made from scrap paper. So again, when we were talking at the beginning about, you know, the, the original essence, the original meanings of a uh, junk journal, I think perhaps vintage is probably nearer to it than anything because this is exactly what ladies would have made their journals with. The little bits of scrap paper that they had laying around. You know, they'd have grabbed an old piece of, uh, an old bit of paper out of a book and, and put that in there, you know? So it's, it's, it's just incorporating that kind of thing. Uh, tea dye doilies, that's another example of things you can use. Um, you know, when you're backing your tags, don't just have it all as one sheet. You know, make do. What have you got there? Make it look a bit scrappy. It needs to look like you are using up the junk, basically. Um, the things that nobody's really going to want to use. Um, again, she's got some beautiful like ledger papers in here. I think that she's stamped there on coffee paper. Brilliant addition to anything. If you're going to stamp, it just looks like a really aged old paper. Um, some more vintage ephemera here and here and then one of these little tiny baby clip, uh, paper clips which I love and this is stunning it's this little flap she's put on there it looks like there's an envelope you see the other side and it's just like a little sampler but it's so cute again lovely old images in here um, this paper as well everything about it just feels really really vintagey every time I look at this I just want to go make an, another vintage journal it's, it's just lush again these old images the way that she's backed the journaling tag, the pockets, lots of stitching. That's another element with uh, with vintage journals. Um, oh, here we are. This is definitely some original vintage ephemera. So we've got an old receipt in there. I'm trying to spot the date, but it's obviously not in English, so I'm struggling. 
Uh, no, I can't see the date on there. But that is a pretty old receipt on there. So, you know, that's been popped in. And that's just something, it's just got a nice feel to it. Obviously, you wouldn't journal on that. I would never day journal on that. I love that hidden pocket. Um, but it just makes my journal feel old. And again, these lovely images of um, old ephemera. An old notebook front. Again, more out of a ledger book. And that's an actual piece of paper from somebody's ledger book. Um, <laughs> tiny little, these are so cute. I think I have to find out where I can get these from. Um, and then there we are. So your guest checks. That's another great thing to put in. And uh, that's like a, a bank or traveller's check. Um, lots of people, do, if you can't get a hold of vintage ephemera, genuine vintage ephemera, lots of people do uh, ephemera digi kits. Um, and, you know, there are some elements in this journal here that um, Sylvia has used digi kits and she has made them look old herself. So, you know, don't be afraid to, to try that out. Um, there you go, look, so that's an old uh, type of marriage certificate thing again, and she's just made that look really old. She's used the uh, the distress ink and it's um, added that bit of Asian to it. So you don't have to have genuine vintage ephemera. It's, you know, it isn't easy for everybody to find that. I know we've got a couple of kits in our shop and, um, you know, it's, I've scanned in the images and you just need to use a little bit of work to print them. And um, again, these little notebooks, oh, these are so lovely. Um, you just need to print them and age them. So you can coffee dye after you print them, or you can coffee dye, if you're printable, print on coffee dye paper, coffee dye it first. Um, and then obviously just age it up and it, it looks just like the real thing. Now obviously don't try and pass it off as the real thing. That's not what we're trying to say, but um, yeah, if you can make a replica, go for it. Because that's what a lot of us have to do. You know, there's, there's few that actually make full journals that have just full of, uh, vintage ephemera because the cost would just be too high you wouldn't be able to afford to purchase it you know again here we are we've got this lovely stenciling in here um but it's this stamping i love it's great i need to find my stamp box i think it's in the attic here we go so we've got a, a, an original there that's a library card <clears throat> you know you can tell the stuff that is original and it's lovely to have it interspersed with um the other the other items but yeah fantastic so you get the idea this is vintage. It looks old, it feels old, it has old stuff in it. That makes it vintage. Um, everything else is open to your own interpretation. <clears throat> because as I always say, um, there's no wrong. There's no, that's not the way to do that. It's all open to your interpretation. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Just wanted to give you some different examples of different ideas of things that you can make, different types of journals. And I hope it's answered some questions. If it's brought more questions please put your questions in the comments below the video and i'd be more than happy to um come on and answer them to my but obviously the best of my knowledge i don't know everything and um, this is just as i say what i've got here in my possession um there are others with so much more again but um yeah i hope you enjoyed the video if you haven't already subscribed if you wouldn't mind subscribing and if you leave us a like i'd really appreciate that i hope you all have a great day thanks very much bye now